Okay, so let's continue the final part of the videos on power series solution to discuss what if the solution is not, I mean, what if um, the points is not a singular point, i.e. it's not an ordinary point, i.e. it's a singular point. So, so far we have discussed the power series method to solve linear differential equation with variable coefficients uh, when the point x equal to x0 is an ordinary point. However, the method will not work if the x0 is not an ordinary point, i.e. the singular point. So in this case, we need to use another method. So another method could be the Frobenius method. So the Frobenius method is usually used to solve the differential equation about a regular singular point. And this method does not always yield to infinite series solution. So in this method, when only one solution is found, a certain formula can be used to get to a second solution because, you know, um, second order ODE, we need two solutions. OK, so um, in this case, so in this case, we want to know how to identify the singular points whether it's regular or irregular. OK, let's say you are given this um, differential equation P of X times double, Y double prime plus Q of X times Y prime and R of X times Y equals to zero. So OK, in this case, let's see, let's let's see if you're given two differential equations. So you look at the differential equation here. The first one is y double prime plus xy, the similar differential equation like we did in the example, except for the plus or minus x. Okay, in this case, if you compare this equation with the standard form, then you can see that the p of x is equal to one, q of x is equal to zero, and r of x is equal to x. And then we said that uh, when we want to check um, whether the point is ordinary or not, then we, we use this ratio method, right? So you do uh, Q over P, and then since Q of X is equals to zero, so zero divided by one is zero, and then R of X is in this case X, divided by PX is one, so you get X. So both of these ratio, Q over P and R over P, are analytic at X equal to X naught equals to zero, and since then, uh, hence, um, both of these ratio will have Taylor series around the um, x equals to x naught, in this case, x naught equals to zero. Thus, x equals to zero is an ordinary point for this differential equation. But what if we tweak this differential equation a bit where uh, we put the x in front of the x, um, in front of the y double prime, in front of the second order derivative, second derivative. So in this case, now we have P of X equals to X, Q of X is still zero, and R of X is one. So when we do the ratio test, Q over P, you have zero, and R over P, you have one over X. So, okay, when you see one over X here, there's always the condition when this ratio will be analytic, will be defined, will be able to get a value, a number. So in this case, um, since this r over p is equal to 1 over x, this cannot be analytic at x equals to 0. It will be undefined. So whenever it is undefined, it means that it's not an analytic. Okay, So that's why we say that r over p equals to 1 over x cannot have a Taylor series around x equals to 0. Thus, x equals to 0 is a singular point for this differential equation. Okay. So um, how to find the singular points for a given differential equation? Okay, for a given homogeneous second order linear differential equation of this form, so you have A of X in front of the Y double prime plus B of X times Y prime plus C of X times Y equals to zero. It's homogeneous second order linear, but they are non-constant coefficient. So the singular points are simply the points where the a of x equal to zero if the functions a, b, and c are polynomials having no common factors. So let's do an example here. What would be the singular points for the following equation? Okay. These are our example that we want to work on to find the singular points of the Bessel equation and the Legendre equation. So we compare that with the standard form of the second order linear differential equation given here. 
Okay. So singular points, it says that singular points are simply points where a of x equals to zero. Okay, so for Bessel equation, what is the a of x? So let's look at the Bessel equation. So a of x for Bessel equation is x squared. So the singular points are simply when a of x equals to zero. So when x squared equals to zero, you have x equals to zero. So then in this case, x equals to zero is a singular point for um, Bessel equation. And then um, for Legendre equation, so the second one, so the second equation here, the a of x is one minus x squared. So we want to find the singular point, we equate this a of x equals to zero, then you get x squared equal to one, then here you can get two solutions, x equals to plus minus of one. So x can be uh, negative one and x can be positive one. So in this case, it has it has two singular points, i.e. minus one and plus one. But usually only the case in which x equals to zero is the singular point of the equation is considered. Um, a differential equation having uh, x equals to a as a singular point can be transformed by the substitution. So you can read this from your notes uh, and I also put it in the slide here. So you can substitute this with t equals to x minus a to get uh, such that the singular point will be equal to zero. Okay, anyway, um, let's just continue. For singular point themselves, it has two types. So if a, dip, a given differential equation having a singular point at zero ordinarily will not have a power series solution of this form. This is the standard form that we've been working on in the previous examples. So the straightforward method of power series will fail in this case because it cannot, it, it just wouldn't work. And okay, so this singular point x naught of a linear differential equation of this form can be further classified as either regular or irregular. So how do we classify whether the singular point is regular or irregular? So the classification depends on the functions of P and Q in the another standard form that we need to compare with here. Okay, so um, just, just a quick recap. So for a given point, so meaning if you've given um, x naught equals to something, so this point, you need to check whether is it an uh, ordinary point Or is it a singular point? So if ordinary point, yes. So you can use the standard power series method. So, you know, the, the usual uh, y equals to summation from n equals to zero to infinity and x minus x naught to the power of n. So you know how to check for the ordinary point. You need to check the um, q x over px and r x over px and c. Okay, so um, we've done this previously. And then um, if it's not an ordinary point, then it is a singular point. Then you can classify further into two types of singular point, whether it's regular singular point or irregular singular point. Okay, so this is where we want to figure out how to, you know, classify. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let's say you have the differential equation that you have arranged in such a way to have it to be compared with this standard form here. So let's see, so for a regular point, so define what is regular point, then whatever that is not regular point is irregular. Okay, so let's define what is regular point. A singular point, x naught is said to be a regular point, regular singular point of the differential equation if the functions p x now here small p okay small p of x equals to x minus x naught times big p of x and small q of x equal to x minus x naught squared times big q of x are both analytic at x naught okay so we need to check that both of these terms okay this term and this term are analytic. So how do we get those terms? So this um, big P of X, you can straight away get from this and big Q of X, you need to get straight away from this. And this is whatever value given for your X not to check, then you just X minus that value and then times with the X QX and see if QX here is analytic or not and do the same for PX. But you can also do a quick visual check so a quick visual check 
is that all right so you have these two things that you need to check the small p and the q small q so if x minus x naught this term here appears at most to the first power in the denominator of p of x and at most to the second power in the denominator of q of x then x minus x naught is a regular singular point so yeah we will see that in the example in the next slide and other than that any singular point that is not regular thus it is irregular singular point for the equation right so let's do this example to find the singular point for this differential equation and not only to find the singular point for the differential equation but also to further classify it to uh, whether it's regular or irregular singular point okay let's do this Okay, make it larger a bit. Okay, so here let's first um, find the singular point. So when you want to find singular point, you want to compare it against this form of the differential equation. Not five, here is C, right? Okay, so now your A of X is X squared minus four squared so then we can work out to find the singular points we need to equate a of x equal to zero so x squared minus four squared equals to zero we'll just give you x squared minus four equals to zero so x squared equal to four x equals to plus minus two so you can have two now x equals to plus two or x equals to negative two so these are your um, singular points. So we want to check for each singular point here, are they regular or irregular? And now we want to um, compare the given DE to the another standard form, which is the um, Y double prime plus P of X, Y prime plus Q of X, Y equals to zero. So we need to um, divide by X squared minus four, everything uh, squared. So then, um, well, yeah, just rearrange this equation into y squared, I mean y double prime plus three times x minus two over x squared over. Okay, so now here you can see that this is your P of X and this here is your Q of X. So to test for a regular or irregular singular point, so you do this, P of X is what? X minus X naught times Q of X, P of X, okay. And Okay, let's do this one by one. Let's first try for x equals to two, okay? Because we have two value of x, okay? So we need to check each one of them. So let's check for x equals to two, x naught. x naught equals to two. So x minus two times the p of x is three times x minus two over x squared minus four squared. And um, this term here, this term, you can further factorize it so that you can, um, you know, eliminate or cancel out things. So that will give you x squared minus 4 and x squared minus 4. And you can further factorize it. Um, you know, x squared minus a squared equal to x minus a times x plus a, right? So in this case, your a is 2. So x plus 2 times x minus 2, and everything is squared because it happens two times. 
so then you can eliminate whenever necessary. So you have, uh, what do you have here? X minus two, X minus two, because this happens twice. So your P of X, small P of X is thus only three over X plus two squared. Okay. And um, check your Q. So your Q of X is what? Q of X is um, X minus X naught square times your Q of X. So X minus 2 squared times 5 over um, X plus 2 squared times X minus 2 squared. So this one you can also uh, cancel out. So your Q of X becomes this. And now your job is to check whether these um, P of X and Q of X are analytic or not at when you substitute the X equals to 2. When you substitute X equals to 2 inside this, can it still be defined? Can you still have a value? Are they analytic? So when you put 2 inside here, when you put this X equal to 2, you still have a value, right? You, you can still define the px. Thus, it is analytic here. And what if you put this x equals to 2 here? You will still have a value, right? You will not end up with a zero term in the denominator here. So your qx is also uh, analytic at x equals to 2, correct? So thus, we say that since um, x equal to 2, when we substitute into this px and qx, they are both analytic, then x equal to 2 is a regular singular point for the given differential equation. Okay, next we need to try the same thing for x equals to negative 2. Okay, so we need to try for x equals to negative 2. Okay, why did I delete it? Eh? So I, I, I mean, should just stay here, okay? So this is for x equals to positive 2. So we repeat the same thing for x equals to negative 2. So you can see that, um, so you know, your p of x here, I mean, now we do the vi quick visual check. We do the quick visual check. So the quick visual check means, um, says that, okay, what did it say? Quick visual check, if x minus x not appears at most to the first power in the denominator of px, and at most to the second power in the denominator of qx, then x minus x naught is irregular. So okay, we, we'll see, we'll check this one with x naught equals to negative 2 in this case, okay? So if you put x naught equals to negative 2, your p of x will become 3 x minus 2 over x minus 2. And then you look at this, um, this one, and uh, you see that x minus x naught is actually x plus 2, right? So x plus 2 is raised to the power of 2, meaning it defies this condition already, because if it were to be a regular singular point, x minus x naught must appear at most to the first power in the denominator of px, but now, x minus x naught, i.e. x plus 2, appears to the second power, I mean, to the, yeah, to the power of 2 in the denominator of the px. Uh, so, so um, x equals to negative 2 is, a, in this case, already is an irregular singular point. But we can also check another one with qx as well. So your q of x, um, the big q, okay, it is 5 over x plus 2 squared, yeah, this one. So you can also see okay, here, what does it say? And at most to the second power in the denominator of qx. Okay, in this case for the second test, it, it, it satisfy the condition. Okay, it satisfy, but it doesn't satisfy this. It needs to satisfy both condition for the quick visual check. 
so, so that x not equals to negative 2 can be considered as a regular singular point. So in this case, it fails the px test, but it passed the qx test. So it's still an irregular, but you can follow on um, to the whole thing here and you, you will see that if you substitute x equals to negative 2 into the denominator here, you will get something which is undefined. You will get something over 0. And same thing for the qx, you get something over 0 when you substitute the x not equals to negative 2. So in this case, um, x not equals to negative 2 is a uh, irregular singular point of the equation. OK, so yeah, um, that, that that's basically it for this part of the video. So it is to identify how to get the singular point and for the singular point, how do you classify it further, whether it is a regular or irregular singular point. And um, yeah, these are some vocab vocabularies that you should be reflecting upon at the end of this um, chapter. You need to know convergence and divergence, how to find the radius of con con convergence, how to find the convergence interval and shift the index and combining the series. What is analytic function? What is ordinary point, singular point, regular and irregular? And what is Frobenius method? So, but don't worry about it now. You will learn about Frobenius method in the next chapter. Okay. So, yep, all the best. And thank you.